ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Daily Code, episode 10, and uh, I hope you had a good weekend. I had a great weekend. So, today uh, I thought we would start a kind of series for like a week or so. I don't know if it's all interesting or carry on afterwards, but the theme that I want to start on is building stuff with Eris, which is uh, it is a PHP framework for doing asynchronous stuff, in particular WebSockets, and that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool because I also have an interest in doing highly reactive user interface things, like with ReactJS. So, I thought we could start off today by doing a little bit of ReactJS stuff in preparation for Eris. So, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to create some basic components. Um, the theme I've picked is to try and make a CMS or you know, use that just as an example application. So we're going to create some CMS components and that's in ReactJS today. And so we'll cover some basics of React while we do that. And then continuing on, we'll look at plugging that into WebSockets and doing sort of more intense stuff. So, okay, let's get going. <laughs> right, so uh, remember this. Remember this thing we worked on uh, two weeks ago, apparently, says GitHub? Well, uh, I thought it would be a good opportunity to use this because we're going to make some ReactJS components. Why not have a way to test them and to run them debugging in the browser? So, um, okay, so we'll clone this. Mm. Mm. So we'll clone that. Maybe let's just call this React CMS. Okay, <laughs> well that's going. Um, I thought it would be fun if we put together just basic, uh, just a basic page editor for now. Uh, presumably you've worked with CMSs before and they usually have a thing in common which is that they allow you to edit the pages of your site, uh, of your website. So let's do that. Now that this is cloned, <laughs> maybe we should brush up on what this does quickly. So we set this up on stream uh, a couple weeks ago, probably in one of the first daily codes that I did. And it's basically a starter kit to be able to run React.js stuff immediately in the browser. So a thing it doesn't provide is the npm static file server, which you can do via npm install. And if you want to do it global, just do dash G, and then serve. It's one of a few that you can do. I've already installed it, so I'm just going to go ahead and say so. Uh, now this will open up something on port 3000, so we can open that in the browser. Dun, 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 dun. And go to examples. We should see a warning, because I think the default thing has a is doing a little bit of a thing wrong. Oh, that reminds me, you also need to do an npm install because we haven't committed the npm dependencies to this repo. While it's doing that, if this is the first time you've heard of React.js, where have you been? Also, React.js is a user interface library and it is particularly different from other user interface libraries in that it doesn't make, it doesn't provide anything for you to do model stuff or connect models to your templates with controllers or it doesn't try to implement NVC is what I'm trying to say. No NVC. It is just focused on creating um, interfaces in a very efficient way and brings with it a way of thinking about interface design that is that I think is different. Um, you are when you do React stuff, you think about your interface in terms of individual components, and you try and break them down into the smallest components that you can build parts of your interface from, and you connect them, and you try and make the data go through them in one direction, and you, it's a bit of an info dump, but you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean once this is uh, once this is installed. Apparently, <laughs> it's taking a while. Okay, so the things we have to work with here are we have this index.html file, which is open in the browser and is what is giving me these errors at the moment, because those are still busy installing. Um, and this loads in this index.js file. So here we will start putting 
code for our for our example components and our example CMS. Each different component or different JavaScript that we import from needs to go in this list of stuff. I mean, this one can't really change if other components extend that component. And the way that we've set this up, we can write code according to the ES6 spec, which allows you to do things, which which provides a little bit of syntactic sugar to be able to do things like uh, object-oriented code in JavaScript. And then, because of how we set this up previously, it'll just be compiled back dynamically to ES5, or what is supportable supported by common browsers. So, uh, wow, this is taking really long to install. There's probably going to be a little bit of delay on stream because um, this is this is hogging bandwidth. Anyway, <laughs> you may have noticed I had to restart the stream in the beginning because I was still connected to a VPN to the states because Netflix. So this should. Oh, I really wish this would hurry up downloading. Okay, so back to here. Whenever we create new components in this example app, we're just going to have to add references to them here. So this is the stuff we would say import something from resource. This is the resource string that we need to update or add for each new component we have. And then this just references the file. And we don't need to do extensions because we have default JS extensions on here. Um, the source code looks pretty cool. Ooh, I think it may be done. Oh, getting there anyway. The source code looks pretty cool. I mean, there's a there's a scaffolded component here that we can just change however we want. Maybe we should get going with this. What I want to do is I want to create... Hmm, I want to start off with some data. I At the moment I'm just going to hard code this data because uh, because we don't have the WebSocket backend for it, but what I want to start off is is something like uh, in fact I'll even use let, which is uh, an immutable form of variables in ES6. Uh, pages. Uh, all the syntax. Okay, so we want an array of page objects. For each, we're going to give them an ID. So we'll just hard code this for now. We'll give it a title. So uh, home, uh, a, a slug, or a segment. Segment, I like segment more. So this is like a URL segment. Home. Body, uh, this is the home page. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine for now. I think that's sufficient for now. Okay, let's make a few of these pages, giving them all slightly different information. Three, four. So, home, about us. <laughs> oh, home, about us. Contact us. And I'll just call the fourth one products. Whatever. And we'll look at, later on, uh, we'll look at doing something like um, a product listing and editing this stuff through an interface. In fact, we'll even create the components to be able to change this data now but we won't necessarily persist it until we have WebSockets because we don't have WebSockets. Uh, oh yes, okay. And the fifth page is uh, the fifth page is burning baskets. Okay, this is a page dedicated to <laughs> burning baskets. Okay. That seems good. Okay, those five pages. Now, we're just thinking about our interface in terms of single responsibility components. We're not thinking about how they're persisted yet. Um, and I think a sensible first step in this approach is to do a page class. So we'll say starter page, in fact, react dash CMS. We'll just like, say react-cms. Okay, so page is the one thing. Now, I'm imagining a list of pages, like a list view, you know, like a tabular layout, and, and each page has a line item, and then you click an edit link, and 
then an editor pops up. So page is perhaps one kind of class we want to do. Uh, maybe we want to have something like page list item. Page list item. Uh, and then, okay, so list item is the one view of this. Maybe page editor is another view of this. So we have two different kinds, editor, <laughs> we have two different kinds of um, ways to represent a page in our CMS. So we'll do a list of pages, and then we'll do the action when you click edit. It'll bring up an edit view, and then we can we can just change that as we go along. Okay, so let's start this off by saying, oh, well, we don't. You see, we don't have a we don't have a page list really. I mean, we've got a page list item, but we don't have a list of pages. That's interesting. Because this page list item gets rendered in the list, right? Maybe we need a page list as well. So we have page list, page list, and that has a bunch of pages assigned to it. And in the list view, maybe page admin. Let's call this page admin instead, that seems better. Okay, so we have page admin, and when we get here, well, we have a bunch of pages within this as UI elements, and depending on their state, either we're editing a page or we're just showing it as a list item. That seems reasonable. So, uh, okay, let's let's start working with this. Okay, page admin, um, and let's not render it straight to the document body because we're getting a bit of an error from that. So I'll say div class react, and we'll target this instead of document body, so we avoid an error. Document query selector, React. Okay. Now remember I said for each component we add, we need to add an entry to our index page just so that our dynamic stuff can get loaded. Um, and I'll change these aliases. So I'll say React CMS instead of starter. And this will be component, and this will be page admin. Uh, mm. Hold on, let me try and sort out steam, steam, stream issues. Just hold on. <laughs> Listen to some music. Oh, also, guess what? <laughs> okay. So this, uh,